Hello, great to have you here. Today I'm going to show you several highly detailed full vehicle crash simulations and I'd like to give you an idea on why those are used so widely in automobile development today. Let's start with the classic full width frontal impact. All of the simulation results have been performed by an explicit finite element modelization of a 2010 subcompact car. Getting a model of this detail is absolutely phenomenal. It has been created by the process of reverse engineering at the National Crash Analysis Center of Washington University. This means they bought the car, completely disassembled it, scanned all parts and rebuilt the simulation model out of this data. The final structure consists of 943 parts and just over 1.5 million elements. Also did material testings to apply the mechanical properties to the corresponding parts. All of this was done to support the development of crash safety features for this segment of the automobile fleet. This model and others are publicly available now. The model was validated to mirror the results from physical full frontal 35 miles per hour impacts. Simulation and test shows the same deformation. And even more important, the resulting accelerations which act on the vehicle and the occupants are also comparable. So what is the deal about crash simulation when you perform real tests either way? The answer simply is that there are several advantages which you can hardly receive otherwise. The first upside when using simulation is that you can isolate the crash relevant parts for improved understanding of the system. Here we can see the longitudinal beams at work, absorbing the kinetic energy of the impact and thus protecting the Bessescher cell. Stress and strain plots help in picking the most fitting material and design. And as we now have a validated base model to work with, changes to the design can be implemented and evaluated quickly. The next upside of simulation is that you can use your model on virtually any crash setup you can think of whether it has already been physically tested or not. By this way you can actually derive information on the crash worthiness of the car before the first prototype has even been built. So that reduces the time and the money spent very dramatically. Actually this is one of the main reasons why the safety requirements could be raised so much during the last decades, which led to numerous saved lives during the process. Here is an overview of all the crash cases a car manufacturer has to pass to get the automobile legally approved in 2020 while also receiving good safety ratings. We'll pick two. Introduced in 2012, the small overlap frontal crash is a simple representation of many real crashes happening between two cars. Only 25% of the width of the car is hit, a situation which is very demanding on the vehicle structure. Another innovation is the pole impact, representing a car hitting an obstacle in a 75 degree angle. Let's see how our vehicle performs under these loads. Simulation results show severe deformations of the passenger cabin. As this car was built in 2010 and this kind of impact was introduced two years later in 2012, its design was probably not made with this load case in mind. Since then, the vehicle's crash performance improved and very probable with the help of simulations just like these. There is a design from the year 2013 of the same car, which already shows enhanced physical test results. This view highlights the challenge which this impact poses on the vehicle. The longitudinal beams should absorb the kinetic energy, but cannot function as they are pushed aside during the crash. Next are the results of the pole impact scenario. Again, there are physical tests with an improved and later vehicle design. Let's wrap up the merits of crash simulation. 
First off, you can evaluate the crashworthiness of the vehicle prior to physical sample availability. You can also perform virtual development loops, optimizing design and materials. Additionally, the understanding of the mechanics of the crash can be strongly improved. All in all, considerable amounts of time and money are saved in a very demanding industry. If you want to see more of this content, please subscribe to the channel. Before closing, I have an offer for you. One can easily define additional crash setups. For example, you could do a drop test with the roof first, where you could increase the initial velocity of the vehicles by a factor of two. If you can think of something, uh, then please post it below in the comments. Uh, I will try to translate it into a simulation. So thank you for watching and see you next time.